Jeremiah chapter 18. We're going to read to you only six verses, with verse 1 to 6. And you can follow the reading behind me on the screen. Yep, all right. <clears throat> verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again into an, another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O people, nation of Israel. Before we continue, let me just say the, the application of these six verses has got, is twofold. It is both an application for a nation, but it's also an application for us individuals personally. The application is a dual application. In other words, we can use and say it, it's applying to the nation of Israel, but it's also applying to me as a piece of clay. Amen. Yeah, you didn't realize it. We are all mud balls. Yep. You didn't evolve. You were created. Hallelujah. God He's so awesome. He, he, he wants to communicate a message to a prophet. Now, those days, far more than today, God would sometimes, God would, like in the case of Samuel, God would speak with an audible voice, and God would still speak sometimes with a still small voice. Uh, for, at that time, God would maybe give them a, a vision, a dream. Whilst busy praying, God would say something. But God very often used the prophets. He would tell them to, he would give them an instruction, quite a weird instruction though, to say that this is what I want you to do and it's going to be a message to somebody out there for, for the nation of Israel. Let's use an example. Isaiah the prophet, you know what God said to him? No, let me, God said to Isaiah the prophet, I want you to walk around naked in the streets of Jerusalem for three years. And preach. Now, I, I, I don't know if I would ever attempt to do that. That you must really know that God spoke to you. Because that's quite risky business. Can you imagine? God said to another prophet, to Zia, He said to him, I want you to marry a harlot. But to Jeremiah, God says, I'm going to give you something in the, in the potter's house. I'm, I'm going to give you an illustration. I'm actually going to tell you something. I'm going to show you. So God sometimes used an illustration to get the message across. And God said, Jeremiah, I want you to go to the potter's house. For the next four weeks, I'm going to teach from God's Word valuable lessons that will impact and you'll change your life forever. I promise you that. Because you know what? This is one of the most powerful illustrations of God's Word about a potter and the clay. I was so blessed yesterday at the Men of Faith gathering. Our dear brother, when he opened his mouth, he said he's going to share from God's Word. Guess where he shared? What did he share? He went to Jeremiah 18. I sat there by myself. I thought, God, are you telling me I must preach this Word? Or because he's now sharing it, maybe I mustn't preach it. But God said to me, Gerard, it's so important and serious that I allow you to, to hear the word twice within 24 hours. Same chapter, same Bible, same book. And I believe that this is a life-changing message for those that will take it. So we, we like to read the story about the potter. Let me just say that. In Jeremiah chapter 18, the potter is busy making a vessel. In Jeremiah chapter 19, the next chapter, God tells the potter, or Jeremiah, you had to go and tell the potter, that you have to take the vessel which you have made, take it to the valley of Hinnom, and you have to break the pot in the valley of Hinnom. So chapter 18 is linked to chapter 19. 
Chapter 18 speaks of the grace of God, and chapter 19 speaks of the judgment of God. We often want to only hear grace. And there is a teaching in the world which they call the hyper-grace movement. If it's not, if it's not the God will bless you prosperity all the time, then some people only preach grace. But very seldom if we are balanced in our walk with God and if we understand God's Word and we are keen students of the Word of God, which we ought to be, we will understand that God is both a God of grace, but God is also a God of judgment. I cannot separate the two because I know I'm not worthy to stand here and preach the gospel. Then it will be a half-baked gospel. The reality is that the God of grace now will become a God of judgment. That's the fact. In the Old Testament, you see God's judgment. In the New Testament, we see the grace of God. I will elaborate a little bit more on the Valley of Hinnom when I go to a certain part later on in this series. But I want to talk to you this morning specifically about the essentials in the potter's house. You see, because he's making a vessel. And I want to become a vessel of honor. There are many vessels of dishonor. There are vessels that do not honor God, but I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind many years ago in 1984. I said, God, I want to commit and surrender my life to you. Because I want to be a vessel of honor. I'm tired of the doing the way, the old way. I'm tired. I'm frustrated with myself. At times, I'm t- I, you, maybe you say, I can kick myself. I make a wrong decision or choice. But I want to get back on the track. And that is what the gospel is about. The essentials for the potter. How does he make a vessel? I'm just going to give you a few points this morning and then as an introduction for what's to come. Let me just say this, family of God. The potter and the clay is all about relationship with God. The whole story is about God wanting relationship more than anything else. You cannot outgive God and you can't pay your way to salvation with finances. You cannot pay your way for salvation with doing good things. There's only one way you can do that. You have to come to a place of absolute surrender and say, it's no longer me. I'm dying today. I'm dying for myself, to myself, and become alive for the Son of God. Yeah, I've messed up. I've messed up terribly. I've, had a, I've got a bad past. But praise God, you are here. You are here. The pot is not finished yet. He's still busy with you. Don't try and get off now. Don't leave your seat. If the seat gets warm, I can assure you we don't have heated seats here. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit just warming the seat a little bit for you. Or if the seat becomes uncomfortable, praise God. That's a good sign. Maybe God just wants to shake and stir a little bit. Yeah. I want to talk to you just about the four, three essentials. We're first going to talk about the potter. Now, I think we all know who the potter is. It's not me. It's not you. So who's the potter? The potter is God our Father. But I'm going to give you very quickly on, under that point, I want to give you quickly four points. Let's call them the four P's for Peter. All right. Number one, God the potter. He is a person. He's not a force. I, I'm so thankful that my life is not in the hands of an invisible force. I'm so glad that my life is not in the, in the hands of a fate, of darkness. I'm so glad that, that I know my life is in the hands of the one who created me, who is not a force, who is not an imperson, impersonality or, or something remotely far away removed from us. My life is in the hand of God, who is a person, who came in the form of Christ Jesus, who died on the cross, who understands my weaknesses, he understands my frustrations, he understands those things that are hurting me. Because he's not a force, 
He's a person. I get so tired of the New Ages talking about, oh, Mother Nature. They can't put even on the insurance documents the name of God when you are left to Mother Nature. Mother Nature is controlled by God. The universe He holds in His hand. Heavens is His throne. The earth is His footstool. <laughs> How big is our God? It's not in the hands of a force. I'm not here just by accident. No, you, listen, you are here today by a divine appointment. Amen. The God of the universe have called you to be here because He wants to say something to you. He wants to change you. He wants to give you hope. Because some of you feeling like hopeless. I'm not saying you are hopeless. I say you feel like hopeless. But God says, I want to infuse you. I want to re-energize you. I want to revitalize you. I want to create you into something beautiful. Because he has the good news. Thank God, as long as I've got oxygen and my blood is pumping, and as long as I've got breath in my lungs, it says God is not finished. He's not finished. He's still busy working in my life. And as long as I'm here and I have breath in my lungs, I've got work to be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. My life, I'm so grateful, is in the hands of a person. Isaiah chapter 64. But now, verse 8, But now, O Lord, You are our Father, and we are the clay, you are our potter, and all we are the work of your hand. The second, second thing about the potter is the potter is not just a person, the potter has power. Can I say this to you? Say with me, power. God is sovereign. God is powerful. And clay has no ability. Clay cannot mold itself. All clay needs a potter. Romans 9.20 says, But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay? from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. So don't worry about the person. Yeah, I look sometimes at my son-in-law and I look at the length. I said, oh, that must be so nice. Oh, yes, it's so nice when you need something there, the top cupboard and you can't reach. I've got to go and find a little uh, a step ladder where he can just stand there and I... And then, of course, the other thing is some of you have this miracle something in your body which I'm so jealous about. You eat donuts and cake and chocolate. But you stay like... Me, on the other hand, I look at the chocolate and I feel I'm gaining... I just look at it. I won't say, my dear brothers, who you are. You know what, who, you know, you know who you are. The, pro, the, the, the privileged one, the chosen ones. I admire you for that. I say, oh God, can I not just have it in peace and not feeling bad, worried about this and about that? Oh man, listen, this is not too bad. Last night when I plumped down, I was bouncing. <laughs> I thought, oh God, that's good. There was a good barrier there. It was a nice tube. It, it took the impact. Hmm. God has power. He's not just a person. But God wants to mold you and shape you into a vessel of honor. Turn to your neighbor and say, vessel of honor. Number three. God is not just a person. He does not only have the power. But here I can, here's an important point. God has got a plan. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for your life. 
and maybe you, this is the time in the season in your life where you start to think, oh God, maybe this is the first time you hear about it. But I want to say to all of us here in this house that God has got a plan for my life and He's got a plan for my wife and He's got a plan for each one of us in this place. No matter your age, no matter your background, doesn't matter your upbringing, doesn't matter which family you came from. The plan of God is not just a universal, global plan, but God has got an individual plan for my life. And I need to discover what is God's plan for me. And once I discover, as I, as I go along the journey and I discover more about what is it that God really called me to do? Now, the, 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 the challenge is that God... In his mind, the potter sees the end product. We don't see it. We just journey along. And wherever I am in my spiritual journey, I can guarantee you can't see what God has got in plan in store for you. He says, just tag along with me, and you will find out what God wants to do. Hallelujah. There was a time in my life, before I was married, I didn't have a plenty relationship with girls. I had one or two, I think. Before I met my wife. But after the last one, before her, I thought, oh God, maybe I mustn't worry too much about the woman. That will happen. And I promise you it happened. When I started to focus more on God and His will for my life, God just did the adding. And the adding became adding. One child, two child, three child. Stop, in case you thought I'm going further. Then God says, I'm not done yet. Grandchild one, grandchild two, grandchild three, grandchild four. And now my one son says, dad, maybe grandchild five. If he's anything like his dad, he might have more. You see... God has got a plan for your life, and in between all of this, I said to, I always say to seek God first. Delight yourself in God. Do not look at what you have and what you don't have. Don't worry about this happened and that happened. Focus on God. Read God's Word every day. Pray to God every day. Spend time with God. And as you spend time with Him, the plan will start to unfold. I am confident of this, Paul said, Philippians 1 verse 6, of this very thing, that he who begun a good work, say with me, good work. Turn to your neighbor and say, good work. God began a good work in, He will complete it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four. God is a person, one. Number two. He has power, number three. He's got a plan, number four. God is patient. Oh, thank God that He's patient. You see, uh, the potter takes time and he shows patience when he tenderly molds and shapes the vessel. And it does take time to make a worthwhile product. And God is willing to wait. And sometimes God allows the pressure. And sometimes He allows certain things to happen so that you can grow and develop. I one day read, you know those days, I don't see really a lot of bumper stickers. Remember there was a time when bumper stickers, honk if you love Jesus, and all that kind. I saw a bumper sticker once that said, Be patient! God is not finished with me yet. Amen. I want to say to you to this morning, be patient. Husband, your wife works on your nerves. Be patient. Wife, husband is not just working on my nerves, he works on every fiber in my being. Pastor, you don't know. He does not work on my nerves only, he works on the nerves of my children and the dog and the cat and even the parrot. Be patient. God is not finished with him yet. Be patient. God is not finished yet. I say to you for a third time, be patient. And pray, man. Stop telling me about these mistakes. Start looking for the good and start praying. (laughs) 
You know? So the first essential in the potter's house is what? God is the potter. We need the potter. I just gave you four points about the potter. But I want to go to the second essential. Are you ready for this? What does the potter work with? He works with clay. And if we read Genesis 2, 7, we realize that the first man was formed from the soil of the earth and the mist that came and God formed man out of the soil, the clay, and God breathed into the nostrils of man life. So here's the point. Very important point. Listen carefully. Before I worry about what I will wear, what I will drink, before I worry about where I will do this and when will I do that, before I even worry about my holiday, before I even worry about my body, can I suggest to you this morning, I'm talking about the clay. Who's the clay? Are you part of the clay? I hope you say yes. But here's the point. The most important quality of clay is that clay yields. Clay yields to the hands of the potter. Before anything else comes in life, clay needs to yield to the potter. Because you see, if the clay fail to yield to the hands of the potter, the clay will be spoiled. What does it mean to yield? I'm so glad you asked the question. To yield means to surrender. To yield means to submit. To yield means to give away. To yield means to give oneself up. To yield means to be dedicated to. To yield means to be devoted to. No clay can mold itself. Clay needs to be in the hand of the potter and yield to the potter. If you want to become a vessel of honor, today will be the day that you say, God, I'm going to yield to you. I want you to turn me around. By God's grace, God will help you because we are in the hands of God. We sang this morning, I will make room for you. So God says, I'm going to give you later an opportunity to make room when you make a quality decision to yield to Him. We need God in our lives. Family clay on its own is of no, no value. But listen to this. Clay does have the potential to become something great if it is molded by the right hands for the right purpose. Think about Saul. Acts chapter 9. He's on the way from Jerusalem to Damascus in Syria to do what? To persecute the children of God. He wanted to, to bring them back to Jerusalem. He wanted them to be tied up and bring them back. He wanted them to come suffer at the hands of evil men. That was Saul. But when God stopped him in his tracks, the next moment, he became blind. He heard a voice from heaven. And what happened? God turned him from a persecutor into a follower, a participator, a man who said, I will now give up everything. And, I, and, 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 and this man, Saul, who turned into Paul, was, became so great in God's kingdom that he wrote more than half of the New Testament. You should know why? God had a plan for his life. You will never discover the plan of God unless you yield to the God of the plan. You will never find out what God wants you to do unless you ask God. You can come to me and say, Pastor Gerard, can you pray for me? Can you do? I can do that, but the choice is an individual choice. I have to see God. I have to sacrifice time. I have to get on my knees. I've got to open the Word. I've got to listen to what God is saying. It's the only way. Are you still with me? You see, there are no self-made Christians when you're in the will of God. When you're in the will of God, it's about His plan. 
and about His purpose. It doesn't mean that I can now become inactive because I'm just a lump of clay. No, you're a lump of clay in the hands of God. But God wants us to seek Him. So that was the second essential. God is the potter. We are the clay. On what does the potter make? The vessel. A wheel. A wheel. <laughs> Who spins that wheel? The potter. He spins the wheel. What does the wheel refer to? Listen to me very carefully, yeah? The wheel refers to the circumstances of life. God says, I'm going to use the clay, I'm going to shape them according to the speed of the wheel. And in our Christian life, according to the circumstances that I allow. Because some of us sit here this morning and you are so frustrated maybe and you are so tired and you have so many unresolved questions and you are still seeking God and you've been praying God and you say, I feel as if my prayers are not even reaching the ceiling. I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. And you say, Pastor, what must I do? I will say to you, keep on praying. Hmm. Because here's the thing. The circumstances of life is there to shape you. And the potter will keep you there to put something in you. Because who wants to be a vessel of honor? Can I see who wants to be a vessel of honor? Put up your hand. I put up both my hands, but here's the thing. If you say that, I want to say to you, the difficult things you are in, he says, I'm busy molding you. Remember, be patient. God is not finished with me yet. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There is no such a thing for the child of God as chance or luck. I, I, I remember there was this guy who taught my son Mikhail to play drums. This guy taught the guy who trained the drummer of Freshly Ground. It's a group. That same guy taught my son to play drums. He was a brilliant drummer. But he could talk a lot of nonsense. He was filled with a lot of nonsense. He one day told me he's a pedemologist. I looked at him like I'm looking at you. Pedemologist. I assume it's got something to do with pyramids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I studied them in my previous life. <laughs> I, I, excuse me, I, I, the pyramids, I understand. What do you... Now he's got my curiosity. You know, and when people talk nonsense like that, I want to engage in this conversation. It's like an invite to me. So I, I, I started talking to him about his pre and reincarnation, da, 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 da. But uh, this guy... <clears throat> His name was Vic Higgins. He came to me and he said to me, you know, you are always lucky. <clears throat> I said, no man, I'm not lucky. Let's just get this right. I'm blessed. I, I don't believe in luck. I believe in blessing. I don't pay a tip. I believe in blessing. Hello? It's not luck. I'm blessing. I've been blessed to be a blesser. I'm a blessing. I receive a blessing. I always say, expect your miracle. You're going to get it. Not luck, no luck, no by chance. It is all in God's plan. You didn't get the promotion because you thought you were the, the blue-eyed boy. You didn't get the promotion, even if you don't have blue eyes. You didn't get the promotion because you felt, oh, I'm so lucky. No. If you're, who of you are children of God? I hope so most, okay? But if you're not sure, I'll still pray for you. But here's the thing. You're not lucky. I like to say to people, oh, sir, how are you doing? And I say to them, listen, I am too blessed to be depressed. Oh, that's a nice, it's not just a cliche. I really mean it. I'm blessed. Coming in. Going out. I'm blessed on a Sunday. And I'm blessed on a blue Monday. It's my off day. When all of you go to work, I say, 
gaan werk maar. Ik werk nou. No, it's not in my only time. But family of God, Romans 8 verse 28 says that God will cause all things to work together. All things, the good, the bad, the beautiful and the ugly. He says, I am causing it to work together so that you can become what I have in mind. God will cause all things to work together for those who love God and those who walk according to His purposes for their life. I'm not an accident. I'm not a nobody. I'm a somebody. Because God's got my name and God knows exactly who I am. Listen to this. I'm going to end with a story. Next week we will continue. Let me just recap. The three essentials I spoke today about, God the potter, God is a person, God has power, God has a plan, God is patient. God the potter. Then we have the clay. Who's the clay? We are the clay. The third point, what is the wheel? The circumstances of life. And even when it doesn't feel like it's going good, you have to stay on the wheel. Let me give you a premature bonus. The will of God is always in the center of the wheel. Right in the center. Because the centrifugal force will keep the clay on the wheel if it's in the middle. If you put clay, I went to a pottery, if you put clay on the side of the wheel, it will spin off. It's got to be in the perfect center of the wheel. And a potter will tell you that. So you have to be in the perfect center of God's will for your life. No matter what he's busy doing. And, uh, oof. Because sometimes he applies a bit of pressure here and there. But he says, stay on the wheel. Don't jump off. Because God's not finished with me yet. I read this story about the cracked water pot. There once was a water carrier in India. And this guy carried two large water pots around his neck on a pole. Have you seen those guys? They call him a water barrier or a water carrier. He had water a water pot on both sides. And every day this carrier, he would carry water from the stream a long distance up the hill to the master's house. But there was just one problem. One of the pots had a crack in it. Now the perfect pot always delivered a full pot of water at the end of the journey when they came to the master's house. But the crack pot every time arrived half filled. And every day for two years daily, the carrier delivered only one and a half pot of water to the master's house. And the perfect pot was so proud and my accomplishments of what I've done. The poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection. Miserable that it was unable to accomplish what it was meant to do. After two years, the crackpot really felt like bitter failure and said, I am ashamed of myself. And I want to apologize to you, the water carrier. Why? Asked the water carrier. What are you ashamed of? For these past two years, I have delivered only half of my load because of the crack in the side leaking out all the water on my way back to the master's house. Because of my flaws, you must do all this work and you don't get full value from your effort, said the pot. The water carrier really felt sorry for this old cracked pot and said, you know, as we return to the master's house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. As they went up that hill, the old crackpot took notice of the beautiful wild flowers on the side of the path. But at the end of the trail, the water pot still felt bad. The water carrier replied and said, Did you notice that the flowers were only on your side of the path? 
but not on the other pot's side? That's because I've always known about your flaw, and I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path, and every day while we walk from the stream, you've watered them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my master's table. Without you being just the way you are, you would not have had the beauty to grace his house. Maybe you feel like that water pot. Maybe this morning you feel ashamed of yourself. Things you had done, things you had said, maybe you caused hurt to somebody or pain. Maybe today you feel like a failure, full of flaws. I have a burning desire this morning on my way here, and I said to, to, to my brother here, say, just come and play something, but I want to pray for you this morning. Because I do believe that all of us are pots with cracks in it. But God wants to help you this morning to just put the pieces together so that you start off by understanding that God's not done and finished with you. That God is still busy with you. Even though you have so many questions, you say, Pastor, I, I don't know why, but I feel so broken. I feel so, so lonely at times. I feel so bad, sad. I, I feel bitter. I feel hurt. I feel pain. God loves you. And He's got a perfect plan for your life. But you have, as we said in the beginning, I will make room for you. I'm going to invite the church to step out of your seat and come here and say, God, this morning I'm going to make room for you. I'm going to make more room for you. I need healing this morning in who I am. I need to ask God to cleanse me. God just mend the pieces together. God says, I'm not going to mend you together. I'm going to make you all over. A new start today in this house. If you believe that God wants to touch you, then I want you to take the courage to stand up, step out of your chair, and come to God, not to me. Say, God, I'm stepping to this morning. Yeah, because I want to make room for Him in my life. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be no funny business. You're just going to come and stand here and I'm going to pray a prayer for all of us. If you mean business, don't. Maybe you've never done that before. Don't be shy. I want to say to you, don't be shy. Come on, church. Let us all come to the front. I really believe we should be all here in the front. Hallelujah. I'm making room for Him today. I'm making room for God. He is the potter. I am the clay. Let us just start here in the front and let's just sing the song and then we're going to pray. King, abide in me. Pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love. Bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. Come loving me. 
waiting again let's sing it this morning unto Jesus here I am waiting here I am waiting abide in me I pray here I am longing for you Hide me in your love. Hide me in your love. Oh, bring me to my knees. Bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus. May I know Jesus. More and more. More and more. I'm loving me, Lord. Come live in me all oh, my life Take over Come breathe in me And I will rise Go on And all my life Take over Come breathe in me Come breathe in me And I will rise Don't leave Cause we Hallelujah while the musicians play softly, rise on eagle's wings, on eagle's wings. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, church. I want you to know that this is a God moment. I want to respect this moment. It's holy. It belongs to the Lord. I know God has prepared my heart for this. I knew before I came here this morning, this is what God wanted me to do. I've got no doubt. Some of us here this morning, maybe you've never done this ever in your life. But God knows that. And God's presence is here. And today as you stand here, your heart is so much pain. Maybe this hurt. God, I feel I've failed. I've tried so hard. But every time, every time there's a wrong thought, every time there's a, a word coming out and it's not a good one, I feel like a failure. I feel I failed my spouse. I feel I failed my family. I feel like I'm not worthy. But God says you are. Because it's not what you did, but what Jesus did for you on the cross. He died not just for now. He died for all your sins in the eternal past. He says, I'm going to wash you right now. I'm going to cleanse you. You're never going to go back on the old path. This very hour, this day, this moment, God says, I'm doing now a supernatural work of grace in your life. God says, I'm forgiving you. I'm cleansing you right now. I want you to just pray with me and say, Father God, I come before you this morning. My heart is broken. I truly feel bad because of what I did. Come on, pray it out. Say with me, Lord Jesus, today 
I choose to yield to you alone. I give you my heart, my body, my soul. Today I make a commitment to serve you. I ask you to forgive me of my past. I receive you in my life. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and shape me to become that vessel of honor that you want me to be. I refuse to go back. I look up towards you. For you are my God, my Savior, my Rescuer, my Deliverer, my Healer, my Provider, my Protector. In Jesus' name. Father, everyone that prayed that prayer from the sincerity of their heart, I ask you, Holy Spirit, seal that prayer and that word. And may they often be reminded of the commitment that I've made. I will not allow the enemy to steal what God has planted in your heart. Therefore, in the presence of all God's people, I take authority over the works of the evil one in your life and I cancel out any assignment against your life. Your life is under the blood and I say to the devil with the authority of Christ Jesus, no more will he interfere in the plans of God in your life. I cancel out that plan of the devil against your marriage, against your husband, against your wife, against your children. I stand with the authority of God's Word. And I receive today that I am more than a conqueror through Him that loves me. And I can do all things through Jesus that loves me and gives me the strength. Amen and amen. Can we give God a glorious hand this morning? Thank you, Father. I I want to just say this. You should have felt a burden lifting.